Hello, my name is Nicholas and welcome to an introduction to RabbitMQ, a message broker implementation for the advanced message queuing protocol. We're also going to do a little coding and the examples will be in Java. Uh, we're also going to use Docker to run a local instance of RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ conveniently has libraries for most programming languages, including Python, Ruby, PHP, JavaScript, and many more. AMQP is an acronym for Advanced Message Queuing Protocol. And as the name implies, it's a protocol for creating and handling message queues. Having a standard for how this is done enables numerous implementations to exist and, and potentially interoperate. Uh, and, and it also makes it a lot easier to switch out one piece of middleware for another since they all conform to the same contract. AMQP was born in the banking domain uh, as it's especially suitable for, for things like uh, financial transactions. And in general, AMQP is a very suitable protocol for implementing all kinds of event-driven microservices, regardless of the domain. So let's quickly go through the idea of AMQP on a higher level and the components that it consists of. The AMQP architecture consists of a publisher, an exchange, uh, one or more queues, and one or more consumers. The messages that are being passed around can be in any format, including uh, JSON, XML, or, or even just plain text or it could be like serialized objects or, or something like that. Um, and so, so starting from here with the publisher, the publisher publishes messages to the message broker uh, that, that uh, uh, you could also say it kind of sends messages to the message broker. This could be like a scheduled task set to run at a given interval, or it could be the result of an action like making, making a payment or sending a message in a chat application or something like that. And so the message broker consists of an exchange and one or more queues. The exchange takes the message and it's going to direct it to the appropriate queue. The queues have consumers, which consume the, the messages in the queue. And you can think of these kind of as workers that are waiting for new things to do. So if a message, uh, I'm sorry, if a queue has no consumers, then the messages will stick around and the queue will obviously grow if more messages keep getting added to it. And uh, usually scaling the number of consumers to handle the workload as the rate of the new messages in the queue or, uh, or the messages increase. Um, uh, scaling this is pretty straightforward. So that's one advantage. We can just add more consumers. But uh, it's important to remember that if there is no consumer at all and the, the queue keeps growing, well, then that, that's not a good situation to be in. Additionally, the consumer can acknowledge the message or reject it and force it to return uh, back to the queue to be consumed again later. There's a few other ways to handle this, but, but we won't be going into it right now. And so RabbitMQ, that's the, the, that's the implementation of the message broker part of AMPQ. RabbitMQ is written in Erlang. Uh, it has libraries for most programming languages and even some frameworks uh, like uh, Spring. It also has um, a handy interface for monitoring that's accept, uh, accessible through the browser. But without, uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump into a hands-on example using the regular Java libraries for RabbitMQ, along with the official RabbitMQ Docker image from Docker Hub. So I'm going to assume that uh, you have Docker installed on your computer. Um, and yes, I'm running Windows here. To make sure that you have Docker installed, you can uh, run something like Docker PS and make sure you get some kind of result like this. You'll also need to be uh, logged into Docker Hub. Uh, if, you don't, uh, if you don't have credentials for Docker Hub, you'll need to create those. Um, then we can go ahead and do Docker run uh, and specify, let's specify host name, uh, my rabbit, and then uh, let's specify some name here and let's say some rabbit, some rabbit. Uh, then we need to forward a few ports. So we're gonna forward the port, uh, uh, the port 8080 to the port uh, 15672. So that's going to be the, the management interface that we can access through the browser. And then we're going to forward the port 5672 to the same 15672. And uh, that's just a normal port for uh, for the RabbitMQ node uh, or the defo default port for that. And then we're going to say RabbitMQ and we're going to take RabbitMQ3 and we're going to specify that we also want the um, the uh, management uh, management version <laughs> of it so that we have access to the management interface. And uh, let's run that. Uh, let's 
let's see. Oh, I see. Yeah, we need to specify. This is also just a port forward. There we go. And then we can run Docker PS. Um, and we can see that now we have this running here. Uh, now we can jump uh, jump into our IDE and uh, we're going to to make uh, one of those publishers and we're going to make one of those consumers and run them against this. Uh, we can also actually see that uh, that we have this um, this management interface so that if we just go to localhost 8080, uh, we have access here to this uh, to this RabbitMQ uh, management interface. So what I have here is a simple, uh, simple little project called uh, Tutorial. It's a Maven project. Uh, the POM XML looks something like this. So uh, I have a dependency to the AMQP client, uh, RabbitMQ, so that I can access the the, the RabbitMQ uh, in Java code. And then uh, then I have some some basic boilerplate uh, boilerplate Maven stuff here. So uh, I have an empty source folder. Let's go ahead here and create a package. So let's call that uh, uh, something like this. And in here, let's start by uh, by creating our publisher first. So um, just call it publisher. And then we're going to just create a, a main method in here. Uh, so publish. And let's see in here, we're going to say uh, connection factory, uh, factory, Let's make a new connection factory. Then uh, we're going to say factory and set, set the URI, which we're going to set to AMQP. And then just with the guest credentials uh, at localhost. So password guest and, and uh, username guest. And this uh, strong an exception. Then let's go ahead and uh, set uh, set just a timeout just in case. There we go and let's say uh, something like this. And uh, then let's get a connection. regular old connection this needs an import um, and uh, and then then we're going to need a channel there we go and we're going to need to import channel again uh, import channel again let's make this a little bit bigger easier to see uh, are these drawing exceptions also there we go that's better then let's go ahead and declare Q. To do that, we're going to say Q declare. Um, we're going to give it a Q name. So this is going to be something like, uh, let's just come up with my Q. Uh, then we're going to uh, make sure that it's um, it's gonna st stick around. So even though there's no uh, there's no messages anymore there, uh, that 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 it doesn't just disappear. We want it to stick around. Um, then we don't want to go away after this publisher is done. So uh, we're going to say exclusive is false. Uh, also, auto delete is going to be false. And then arguments, we don't need anything. Then um, let's just do a simple loop here. So let's say int count, count zero. And while uh, well, we could make an infinite, but just just so that it ends at some point, let's say 5000. Um, then let's go ahead and just make a message. So we're going to say string message is uh, message number um, plus count. There we go. Um, and then uh, then we're going to publish this. So uh, to publish it, we're going to just say channel. And then we're going to make a basic publish. So as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff here that we can do with a channel, but uh, we're just going to make a publish here. So for for the exchange, we're just going to leave that empty. Then uh, we're going to need to give the queue name again. So uh, let's say my queue. Um, 
then we're going to need to give it some properties but we don't have any so that's fine we can leave it like that and finally we can just give it the message bytes so uh yeah. And as you can see, it's just message get bytes. We could we could be giving it anything and or serialize uh, serialize uh, any other kind of object as well. Then let's just increment count count here, um, and uh, then let's uh, let's just print that out. I guess. Uh, so yep, and then let's just say it's going to print out the message here, uh, or or let's actually say published message like that now since i have it up like this um let's see here if we if we make this a little bit smaller uh let's go here and go go to debug and run this let's go to queues let's see what happens here oh wow it's publishing a lot of these uh let's actually stop this that something we forgot <laughs> yeah uh yeah let's make this maybe sleep for a little bit uh so let's say <laughs> sleep and let's make it sleep for five seconds this throws an exception there we go uh and let's see now this has a lot of messages uh maybe delete this this queue is going to be deleted yeah that's fine and let's run this again so uh, clear all, let's run it again. Let's see my queue. And as you can see now, every five seconds, it's uh, it's adding a message. This, uh, or it's adding the published message here. And as you can see here, the the queue is just growing. That's fine. We're going to we're going to let it grow for a little bit while we make a consumer to consume these messages. So if we go here, uh, we can see that consumers at the moment there's no consumers, which is why the queue just keeps growing and growing, um, and uh, and <laughs> the messages aren't getting handled. Uh, so the rate is all right. So let's let's go ahead then and go to here, and we're going to create. Uh, new Java class and we're going to call this then the consumer and uh, here we're going to go ahead and do this and we can make this a little bit smaller a little bit bigger here there we go and so let's go here to consumer make this a little bit bigger um, and again here we're also going to make uh, let's do here public static uh, or main, just the regular main method again, and it's going to be this. And then we're going to actually do most of the same stuff here. So we're going to be needing needing all of this. We can just copy it, of course. If there's a better ways of doing this in a real situation, but it's uh, like that. So we need all of these same things. Then we're going to. Um, uh, we're going to say uh, this is a consumer uh, new queuing consumer uh, so the typo there uh, queuing consumer like that yep and like that uh, what's the issue here yes I need to give it the channel I believe yeah uh, and then here we're just going to say channel and basic consume um, and we're going to say the queue name and that was my queue we need to repeat this of course it would be good to maybe put this in a in a constant somewhere uh, so that we don't have to to uh, repeat it every time we're gonna say false for um, for auto acknowledge uh, and um, uh, that's just so that I can show you how to acknowledge messages uh, messages kind of explicitly here uh, then we're just going to create a while a while loop that lasts forever and then we're going to here say queuing uh, consumer again a typo somewhere again missing the same e uh, and then we're going to say delivery and then we're going to just get the next next delivery to consume from the queue delivery Mm, yeah. Nope. Equals and uh, 
we are going to need to name it and this is from the consumer and it throws an exception there we go then we're going to check uh, just if this delivery is not no and then we can do something with it uh, so we're going to try and uh, do this so string message uh, is um, like this and then we're going to get from the delivery there's a bunch of stuff we can get envelope properties but we're just going to get the body so uh, the body is what in the publisher we set here message get bytes and that's what we're getting here in delivery delivery get body and we're making a new string out of that since we know that it's a string that uh, that we're sending sending ourselves and then we're going to say car sets and utf8 yeah that's good then uh, let's just uh, i guess print out the message um and let's say here that message consumed and to print out the message here like so um and so now if this was successful we can do just a basic acknowledge uh so basic acknowledge and uh, we can just say delivery get envelope uh, again get the delivery tag and then uh, it's just one so we can say uh, false here yeah but um, if for some reason this doesn't work out so usually we don't just print out something we do something here yeah so we, we interact with io or something uh, something like that uh, the things can go wrong so in case it does go wrong and we still want to uh, want to do something uh, try it again later uh, we can always uh, reject the message so uh, instead of the acknowledge we can say channel and say basic reject here so like that and then we actually we can just give the same things from here uh, so and and this way uh, well depending on kind of your settings and your configuration otherwise but uh, but uh, and, and what you say here for reQ uh, you I could, uh, yeah, actually, if I say true uh, for EQ, then it's put back to the queue. If I say false, it won't be put back, but we want it to, to be put back. So so uh, if we set that to true, then uh, then it's going to go back to the queue and some other worker will try and uh, and consume it again. But uh, as you can see, our queue is still growing here. We're at 75 messages. Uh, that's not good. So as you can see here from the console, it's just making uh, more and more of them. And we're, want, uh, we're going to want to... Uh, uh, to do something about this, so let's try and run our uh, consumer here. So we're going to go here, debug, run consumer. Uh, yeah, sure. And let's see the consumer. And whoa, it consumed everything immediately. And as you can see from here, it drops in the queue uh, immediately because <laughs> we run all of these. And uh, now this is going to slowly consume the messages as they get published here. Uh, so we're at 84 and it should publish 85 and as you can see the consumer consumes it immediately also what i meant by uh, earlier by the the fact that we can um uh, we can scale these easy is that i can uh, i could now run another consumer next to this so if i go here to consumer so right now you can see right we have just one consumer uh, if i go here and i say uh, say run for this also we're going to have another one uh, running here we're going to be seeing it any second there you go it's connected there and so now you'll see this will be handling part of the messages and this will be handling the other part so we went from 90 to 92 because this one handled 91 so it's uh, trying to load balance and split uh, split the, the the load evenly which is very nice and handy for us here uh, as, as these are very easy to scale as uh, as the publisher or whatever ha is happening here the load grows uh, or or uh, is reduced or basically if there's high high variability here it's nice to be able to uh, to scale the number of consumers uh, to keep uh, to keep this under control so the queued messages doesn't uh, grow grow to be too large and that was a short uh, introduction to uh, RabbitMQ I hope you enjoyed it and learned something um, thank you for watching and until next time